Hello and welcome to the long-awaited mod pack release video. Uh, this video will also serve as a guide on how to install Forge and just mods in general, so we'll be going through the entire process. So you can skip around, there will be timestamps in the description, you can just hover over go to the different sections. And if this video is helpful to you at all, if it teaches you anything about mods, please do subscribe to the channel. We're coming close to 20,000 subscribers, so if you want to help out, that would be very much appreciated. And besides that, we're just going to get straight into it. So, to install Forge for your Minecraft, the first thing you're going to want to do is just look up Minecraft Forge 1.8.9 and then come to this first link, MinecraftForge.net and find the download recommended and click the installer for it. You will see a probably a link to add focus like this pop up. Don't click on anything on the screen. You're just going to wait till the top right and you see the skip button here. And once you have that, you're going to want to just hit save and you will get this installer that you can put on your desktop. And before you do anything with your installer, you're just going to want to open your Minecraft launcher. And before you do anything with this install, you're going to want to come over to your Minecraft launcher, go to installations, create a new installation, scroll down until you find release 1.8.9, which will be a little bit of scrolling. It's right around here. Once you have that, I would go and hit create and then make sure you run that version of Minecraft, the 1.8.9. This is just installing the vanilla version of it on your computer. Now, once you have this open, you don't have to do anything else. You can just quit it. Won't be touching that again. After that, you can double click on the Forge installer and you will be able to click install client. And what this will do, will it will create this Forge version of Minecraft that will open up and then it'll also create a mod folder in your Minecraft config. Okay, so now that you have Forge installed, I want to talk about getting my specific mod folder installed and my config so you don't have to worry about any of the other setup. So what you're going to want to do is go down to the description and join our Discord server. As you can see here, it is called at and vid. Um, I will be at the top. You can see I have all of these connections to my account. It's just v1dd on Discord to make sure you're on the right server. Um, and then you'll come to this gain access channel and click on this check mark. And this will give you access to the rest of the channels. Now, after that, you can come to the FAQ channel. And at the bottom, there will be this link to go to a Google Drive link. As you can see, drive.google.com. And this will bring you right here, which is our mod folder. This is my mod folder here if you just want the mods and then this is also my config if you want that on top. So you're going to want to install both of these and these will come in zips. So you're going to want to install both of these files. These are both zip files and inside of them is obviously the appropriate jar files and then like text files for the config. Now once you have both of these files on your desktop, what you're going to want to do is right click on each of them. They're both going to be zip files and you'll see extract to something like this. It might look different if you don't have WinRAR installed, but something similar to that and this will turn this into a folder instead of a and as you can see now over here it has turned into a folder but as you can see inside of it are just a bunch of the mods that i use i use sky tills chat triggers dulker not enough updates odin optifine patcher skywalk extras and a water solver now once you have both of these files unzipped you're going to want to come down to your windows search option and type in percent app data percent like that and then hit enter you'll see a file folder with a bunch of stuff like this and once you see dot minecraft you're going to want to click on that and then scroll until you find mods yours will look a lot less cluttered than this once you find mods, you're just going to want to take all of the stuff in here and drag it over into this mods folder. Obviously, I'm not going to do it because mine's already in there, but this will be empty for you. You just want to drag all of this over to here. Now, if you're also installing my config, which will set up all the mods for you, you won't have to worry about any of the GUI elements. You're, get, you're again going to go into the unzipped config folder, find the config folder right here, and then just drag everything in. It'll be a bunch of text files, a bunch of folders, just stuff like that tells the mods how stuff is supposed to behave. And once you have that set up, pretty much everything will be installed and ready to go. You'll just have to boot up your Minecraft and you'll be good to go using my mod folder. So to start off, we're gonna talk about SkyTills or BS mod as the file is called. And what SkyTills does, it's a pretty general all purposes mod. You'll go through, you'll see stuff like always sprint and skyblock. So it kind of goes over everything. And then over on here, you can see it has tons of different features. There's a bunch of dungeon features here. A lot of stuff like oh over here we have a mining feature crystal hollows map which i personally use as well as your death waypoints and a lot of the features that i actually really do like from sky tills are on this first main menu when you do slash st you'll see the edit aliases so you can shorten down commands so whenever i do slash dh it'll just take me to the dungeon hub i also like to use the key shortcuts page so what i can do is i can set a keybind for example right now i have uh, slash is bound to my left arrow key so whenever i hit my left arrow key it'll just do that command for me do that for any command you want any chat command another one i use a lot is the waypoints as you can see if you go through you can set waypoints whatever you want i know i have a lot in the dungeon i believe uh people on my stream can redeem waypoints to just write whatever they want wherever these are pretty good for things like farming just knowing where you are see here in the crystal hollows i have a redstone route 
that I can turn on whenever I want. And you can kind of do whatever you want with these. And then finally, we also have the notification tab. And what this will do is whenever it sees the string that you enter, it will send a message as a title card on your screen. So right now I have it. So whenever the watcher says, let's see how you can handle this, it'll say to go into the blood room. I still have another thing for killed by Lord Jobus. So I know that there's a Jobus in the lobby. I can go looking for it. And you can do this for whatever, any text, uh, zombie miner surfaces, was summoned from the deaths. And that is the general purpose of Skytills. It's a pretty good all-around mod, definitely one you should be using. It's free to use, and no, there's no really downsides. It has good performance, too. Now, the next mod you'll see in my folder, it will just be called CTJS, and that is short for Chat Triggers. And what you can do with Chat Triggers is it's actually just a way to install a bunch of smaller mods onto kind of a easier to use coding system so there will be a lot of like personal mods that people will write and it'll be a chat trigger so as you can see if i go to ct modules you'll see all the stuff i have installed and one of these would be drag prio so i use this for m7 if you do import my config it'll already set up all of these chat triggers for you but if i look up slash drag prio what this will do is in m7 it'll actually like show me what dragon i should be going to in the in the fifth phase it's a lot of small stuff like that, so as you can also see in CT modules, let's see what else I have. Better Map, which is a dungeon map, which I think everybody should be using. I believe it is the best dungeon map. It is completely legal, and if you look at slash BM, this is what it looks like. You can change all sorts of settings, like the scale of icons, the scale of the text, and you can change around a bunch of stuff. So, I really like using this. Um, I, pretty, I really think that anybody that does dungeons should use that. It'll show your player head on the map. And that's basically the point of Chat Triggers. If you want to look more into it, you can actually just go to chattriggers.com and see all of the mods people have created on there. To install a Chat Triggers mod, you don't actually have to install a file or anything. You can just do slash ct import and then whatever the name of the mod is. So it's very nice, very simple, very easy to use, and it usually pretty safe to use. But as per usual, just take caution with whatever you're downloading, whatever you're using. But Chat Triggers is usually pretty safe modules. Now, the next mod you'll see on the list will be called Doker Mod. This is a mod that I don't use as much anymore, but it does have a couple of nice features as, such as hiding extra name tags, which I like a lot. It'll get rid of a lot of mob name tags like in the spider's den. Um, in dungeons, it'll tell you if your terminal is getting throttled. If you're in a guild with a bridge bot, you can actually use this. It's pretty nice. It formats your guild chat a lot nicer with the bridge bot instead of having their name and then the person's name. Um, in the bestiary section, you can see stuff like the arachne kill timer, all sorts of stuff like that. And besides that, just a bunch of other nice little QOL things. I like using this. It doesn't really tank your performance at all. And also, it has this animations page which you can use, which makes your items a lot smaller or bigger, or however you want to mess with them. You might see a lot of people using this, like you see right now, my item's a lot smaller now. I personally don't use this anymore, but I do see a lot of people using it. So this is the mod that does that. The next mod you'll see in my mod folder is called NEU or Not Enough Updates. And what this is, and what it's most well known for, is its PV feature. So this is actually how you get the profile viewer. You can do slash PV, anybody's name, and it'll show you all their stats. This is mostly what I use it for. I don't use the other features as much, but it does have some other nice features in it. For example, if you like the storage GUI, I personally do not, but this is the mod that has it. You can enable the storage GUI, and your backpacks will look like this. You don't actually have to like go into them. I don't use this personally, but I know a lot of people do, so if you're looking for it, this is where it's from. It also has a custom auction house feature, which will make the auction house a lot easier to browse through. But as you can see, there's tons of features through here. Um, I, it would take forever to go through all of them, but I do like using this NEU. It has some pretty nice solvers and stuff like that. The one thing I will say is that it is pretty performance tanking. So if you don't have the strongest of computers and you don't really need a lot of the features on here, I would probably skip out on this one, but the profile viewer is super nice to have. Next up on the list is a mod called Odin. This is a dungeon specific mod. It is completely safe and free and legitimate to use. It does look pretty bad, I will admit, but it has some nice dungeon features such as terminal solvers that I really like, as well as all of this stuff. I don't really use any of this, but over here, especially on the floor seven side, a lot of this like inactive terminals, the melody message, the Simon Says Solver, all of this stuff I really like, as well as the Click Secrets, which is a nice mod that has this without tanking your performance. Um, it has a lot of other features that I'm sure would be useful as well as personal dragon like stuff like invincibility timer This is a lot more of like the more end game like m7 kudra type of stuff that you'll see in here It is a nice mod to have it has some nice f7 features and I definitely recommend using it if you're gonna be playing skyblock for a long time Next up on the list is obviously just optifine This will just increase your performance of minecraft not much to look into it doesn't have a menu or anything um, It does allow you to zoom like this whenever you hold down a key which will be in your controls you just have to find the zoom button minus bound to X and you can just zoom in like this. Um, this isn't really a skyblock specific mod. This just I would recommend having no matter what you're doing because this just increases your performance and nothing much else to it. Now the next mod you'll see on the list is a mod called Patcher. This is another performance enhancing mod and what this does is it is a lot more specific with the stuff you turn on and off. 
Um, I definitely recommend having this. It fixes a lot of FPS issues. You can optimize stuff. Better F1, which will hide your name tags, which I use a lot. Um, it does just increase your general performance, though. So if you are playing Minecraft, I would just recommend having this activated in general. There's a Fulbright toggle, Smart Fulbright, Show Your Own Name Tag. A lot of stuff that I just like using. The next mod you're going to see is Skyblock Extras, and this is the only mod that you may have issues with because you do have to pay $5 to access this mod. I do personally really like this mod. I think it's worth paying for if you are playing Skyblock for more than a couple of days. It's $5 one-time purchase. For example, I have about 4,000 hours of Skyblock, so if you see, I spent $5 on it, right? For every hour that I used it, I've paid $0.001. So I'm paying a tenth of a cent per hour to use this mod. I think... Now we can go through some of the features. One feature that I use a lot is the notify, the on-screen custom chat notifications. This is similar to the Skytills one, but it is a lot more reliable and will help you out a lot. And it also just has a lot of good solvers. We can scroll through it forever. There's so many features. Um, if you import my config, of course, this will all be set up for you. You don't have to worry about going through this. I have all the important stuff turned on and off. But it just has a lot of super nice features that make your Skyblock experience better. I'd recommend spending the $5. Obviously, not everybody can do that but it will be in their Discord. You can join our Discord to get the safe link to theirs. But yeah, this, as you can see, this is just a pretty general use mod, has a ton of different features. They're all configured for me, so make sure if you don't want to deal with going through and reading all of this, like I have, just import my config, and this will all be exactly how I have it. And the final mod that is listed in my mod folder is just called Water Solver. And this is pretty much exactly what it says it is. It is a dungeon puzzle helper specifically for the waterboard. It'll tell you how to do the waterboard puzzle with just one flow of water. It's very nice. So if you're playing a lot of dungeons, very nice solver. Not very complicated to use. It'll give you the exact timings for everything. And I definitely recommend using this. Now one final mod that I do want to talk about before ending this video is a mod that I personally do not use because of the performance issues. But if you are farming or fishing, it is very almost a must-have to use. It has very, very nice features. And this mod is called Sky Hanny. Sky Hanny is a, like I said, very farming and fishing focused mod. But the one issue is that it does take a lot of performance away from your game. So if you're not doing one of these activities, I would definitely recommend not using it. But it just has a lot of nice garden features. I won't show them exactly. But like I said, if you're looking to farm, definitely look into Sky Hanny. You should definitely use that. I figured I wouldn't just leave it out. But besides that, there's not much else to it. I hope that this video helped you at least in some way or the other. And if you have any other questions, please leave a comment. We will try to respond to as many as possible. And besides that, make sure to subscribe and we will see you later.